I had a memory pop up right in the midst of all of this. Pastor Jason kind of hit on it a few weeks ago when he was talking about Suzanne and, and our testimony. And I wanted to share just a little bit with you because I felt like even when it popped up, it was a word. So if you'll put that first picture up, on August the 30th, 2012, I made a Facebook post. Allie Ryan Watley is here, eight pounds, one ounce. August the 30th, 2012. Now, some of you are here for the first time tonight, so you wouldn't know this, but my little daughter, my middle daughter, Allie, is not a Caucasian baby, which this baby is. She looks more like I do. And even I was looking, look at somebody said, how good God is. She is so very beautiful. This name that, that we gave this baby was a name that we had picked out. Ryan is my middle name. And I wanted one of my children, if I wasn't going to have a boy, I wanted one of my kids to carry a name of mine. And, and so I, was, I had this name picked out. We had this baby. Within a week, that baby was taken away from us. We had done an adoption, done everything that you could to safeguard yourself, prayed about it, did everything. And in the end, after about a week of being in our house, a week of us holding her, a week of us sleeping with her and bathing her and feeding her and loving her, we get a call that they're coming to pick her up. And we had about 45 minutes to say goodbye to her. And... What I, I saw in that, that moment, the cry that I heard from my wife, I'd never heard before, helplessness. Ava was just a baby and I remember her saying, why? It's like I was trying to be strong. And when my little girl fell on the floor and she said, why are they coming to take my sister? Everything in me said, Jeff, trust in the Lord, he knows. When I was telling somebody last Wednesday, I said, and just a few months later, something happened. Well, the truth is, when I went looking at the dates, I didn't remember this. We went well after that happened. Maybe for the first month, we thought, you know what? I just thought they'll bring her back. You know, this mother will go and she's going to realize it's harder being a parent, you know, than what she's thinking. And so we just kind of stood in that place. And at the end of the day, I remember that was on a Monday and we had a service to do on Tuesday and everybody was calling us and they were saying, you guys, y'all, y'all need to stay home. You need to rest. You need to do this. Let us bring you some food. And, and we were like, no, we're going to come. And they were like, guys, y'all are in denial. Like you need to grieve. This is, this is bad. And I said, no, we have an opportunity in this moment. We can stay home. And we can allow something taken from us to steal what we're called to do in this moment. Or we can say, you know what? Regardless of the trial that we're walking through, our God is worthy of our worship. It wasn't fake. It wasn't put on. We didn't have to work it up. We stood on that stage and I promise you, there was an outbreak of joy beyond what we could have ever done that night. It's like, it was like the, the Holy Spirit came and said, we're gonna show the devil tonight. And it's like people that had been battling grief and depression, they got wrecked because of the joy of God that came in in that moment. And when we begin to reach through Whatever it is your trial is tonight, when you begin to step out of that place and not let life lived dictate what you do for the kingdom of heaven and how you do it, that's when we're going to truly see the kingdom of heaven come to earth as it is in heaven. It reminded me, even in that moment, I remembered the story of David. And I want to look at that for a moment. 2 Samuel 12, 16. David had a child that was stricken with sickness. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. And then on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. 
And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him. He would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. That's reasonable, right? He might go nuts. He's been crazy already. He's, high, he, he's hangry like Sandy. We ain't going to go tell this joker that he ain't ate in a few days. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. I want you to hear that. Hear it. I'm going to say it again. He arose from the ground. He washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. And I feel like that just like David, the dust of disappointment of yesterday might be upon you. It's time to get up and even the fragrance of disappointment, let it be washed away so that you can come into a place of worship and that your worship isn't, isn't diluted because of things that have happened in the past. That's how we rip that anchor up of disappointment and completely do away with it. There wasn't even a trace of disappointment on David when he entered into that place of worship. But this is what I want you to see. He went into his own house and when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servant said to him, what is this you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. And when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me and the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he shall not return to me. And it talks about, it says this right after that. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her, and she bore a son named Solomon. Now, I want to present to you, had David allowed that disappointment, if he had stayed in the place that he was at, he would not be positioning himself with his wife so that he could see new life come forth. There was a birth that God was wanting to do. Solomon, a wise man, look at everything that Solomon did. Had David stayed in the land of disappointment because the child that was lost, tethered to disappointment, he would have missed the miracle that God wanted to birth through him and Bathsheba. How different the story could have been had David let disappointment take him over. And even for Suzanne and I, there was a miracle that God had. I want you to put the second picture up. Meet the newest addition to the Watley family. Allie Ryan Watley, born October 16th, 2013, 407 AM, five pounds and one ounce. Baby was a month early. And I can tell you on this side of all of that, you see, for me, that whole year of waiting, that was, that was September of the year before. We had to wait way past a year. And let me tell you, my beautiful little girl, Allie Ryan Watley, I didn't let the devil steal my name. He couldn't have my name. He could not have my name. There might be something that he took from me. But the truth was, if I could trust God with my process, he already had a solution that the truth is, I waited over a year. I would have waited 10 years to see the real promise that God had for me come forth. And I believe this, even when I saw the picture, it was so crazy when I saw that other baby pop up because I had thought I had removed every trace of that from ever popping up again. And you know what? I needed a reminder. I needed, I needed to show myself that I was so over the place of loss and so thankful for the place of promise that I could look at it and I was like, I sent Pastor Jason a message. I was like, well, this is weird. Allie Ryan Watley, this little white baby, that ain't her. <laughs> now, she was a little light-skinned. The real Allie was a little light-skinned. I asked her birth mom. I was like, 
are you sure that she's part African-American? Because she looks pretty light-skinned. She's like, just wait, honey. It'll come in. I was, I was like, all right. Because I wanted me a little colored girl with curly hair, everything that I ever wanted in this little girl who is our promise. And some of you, you have the right name. You have the right promise, but because you put it on the wrong thing, you're disappointed. But God's saying, look, take your name back. Take the promise back. Take back what you know is yours and follow me. And I want to help you put it on the right thing. Don't settle for what looks good. Because if you look at that other little baby, she's cute. She's cute. You can hold her. She's a cute baby and you want to hold her and love her and all of that stuff. But that ain't my baby. That's not my promise. And some of you are coddling the wrong thing and you're missing out on the real thing because you're settling right now. And I'm here to tell you tonight, take your name back. Take back your promise tonight. Don't let the enemy occupy your heart any longer because of disappointment. God has called us to partner with him to see his kingdom come and his will be done. And if you allow the enemy to extract the hope out of your heart, you'll never begin to partner with him because all you can see is what is not. Wow. That's it. Disappointment, it doesn't, it's not like everybody thinks, well, I'll just, maybe I'll do this and open the door up a little bit. Listen, you, you've ever heard the expression, you give the enemy an inch, he'll take a mile? No, 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 no. He'll take a hundred miles. He'll take everything that you give him. It's the only power he has. When you see gross darkness cover the earth, it's because we're allowing the enemy to take what's ours. And I'm telling you tonight, there is a promise that God has a portion for you in this hour. Take it. Take it back, take it back, take it back. And then be willing to lay down what isn't really yours. You're fighting. Some of us are fighting for things that aren't ours to have in the first place. They're robbing you. Thank you so much for taking your time to join with us for one of our most recent services here at Kingsway Church. Again, we pray that you enjoyed your time viewing this video. And we invite you, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on newly uploaded content. If you're watching this on one of our social media platforms, we encourage you to like and share this video with your friends. And if you're watching on our website, kingswayal.com, we ask that you send us an email at info at kingswayal.com. Let us know where you're watching from and how this service impacted you. We bless you.